YouTube! How we doing, man? It's your favorite internet vegetable, Jacob Lechuga, reporting for duty, and welcome back to another video, guys. As most of you know, we just got done with Warzone's Season 3 event update, man. And it was quite literally a banger, as most of you know. Now, the event was a pretty big chungus. It ranged over a 24-hour period with three pivotal points within the update where you could actually go into the game and experience in-game events. Now, what cracked me up about that, though, was two of the three moments where you could actually go in-game and experience unique content... They were scheduled in the middle of the day at 12 p.m. Pacific time or around, I think, 3 p.m. Eastern is how that converts. In the busiest part of your day, in the middle of the week, when most people are at work, in school, or whatever it is you do in the middle of the week. I don't know. Maybe you're walking your pet fish. I, I have no clue. It doesn't matter what you're doing. They scheduled it during the busiest time of the day for most people. So I'm making this video to show you guys what you would have saw if you were there during the event and what you maybe missed out on, what you didn't miss out on, which kind of sucked in my opinion and what parts were kind of cool now before i hop into the rest of the content i just want to plug real quick that most of the clips and images for this youtube video are coming directly from my youtube live stream we're live almost every day at 6 30 p.m eastern time on the big old youtubes so feel free to come by check us out i'd appreciate it come look at my gorgeous face or my ugly face whatever i don't fucking know what i am and you i'm probably like a three but if you enjoy seeing my thick bootylicious self Make sure you come in and say hi, Papa Lechuga, and I'll welcome you to the stream. Now, if you would have been there for the update, and if you would have happened to make it in time for the event, after you were done updating your game, what you would have seen is the screen you see in front of you. What I want you to pay particular attention to is right above me in the top left corner where they normally have the BR solos, duos, trios, and quads. Right in that little rectangle, they had a game mode called Destruction of Verdansk Part 1. And if it wasn't intimidated enough that they had a big, fat, red zombie head with a chopper flying at it, they also tacked on, this is the end, to add the little wow factor there. Now, while you queued in for this event, you were greeted by this zombie slash mark badge under the title of the game mode, Destruction of Verdansk Part 1, which kind of tips you off that you're getting ready for a zombie royale type mode. And that's exactly what it turned out to be. One thing that was interesting to me is they had you queue in like it was a normal game. So with that first thought of it's going to be a zombie royale game, you sort of thought it was going, but you were kind of prepared to see that like nighttime mode like we saw back at the Halloween event, but you didn't actually see it for this particular moment. So it was kind of interesting kind of threw me off a little bit but once you got into the plane you knew for sure that it was definitely a different mode once you were in the plane there was actually barely any audio you guys know how loud it is when you first get in the plane it sounds like your eardrums are being assaulted by hurricanes this was actually like weirdly quiet they obviously went for that effect where less audio equals more in this instance and i actually checked my audio settings right here to make sure my master volume was up all the way now one other key thing i want you to pay attention to here was that all locations on the map were crossed out and essentially became those dumb radiation pimples that we saw prior to the event this means that every main drop location that i was looking to get loot at was essentially just a radiation hot zone, but I decided to sack up and land Superstore. I know, I'm a ballsy guy, I guess. Now, during this mode, you actually went about looting like it was a typical BR mode, but one sign that it started to become a zombies-heavy mode was that the fact that there was eight zombies already in the game, and I had just landed in within two minutes of this game kicking off. So you kind of realized as you were running through Verdansk in this mode that you're going to try and try to be the last guy alive, or the last guy to become a zombie. Now, during this event, they actually had juggernaut boxes dropping into the map which was one thing that i thought was pretty cool and i wanted to get my hands on some but unfortunately i got killed by a whole mob of zombies before i could even get the chance to get to one of these juggernaut boxes it is what it is you deal with the zombie horde as they come overall though for this game mode i wouldn't say you were missing a whole ton if you got to experience the halloween event back six to eight months ago you really kind of got to experience this event already and that halloween game mode was around for a couple of days which means you likely got to see what it was like to play as a zombie now this game would remain kind of stale you obviously become a zombie like you did in the halloween event uh but what was really interesting is once the actual like event started to occur once all the players had died out and failed to exfil they had an exfil window that you were supposed to attempt to make it to but there was no way you were going to have it happen with 100 plus zombies going on and so once all the players were taken over as zombies then this warning defcon nuke inbound timer started ticking down and then the actual event happened and i'm gonna let the event just kind of play itself here in my live reaction for you Yo, here it comes, boys. Okay, so they are gonna nuke us. It's too late for Exil, he said. Oh shit, they're all dead. 
They all dead. They toasted. So if you survive, this is not does it nuke you with it, eh? Here it comes. Oh yeah. I kinda like this vibe right here. Dude, it's like a good edgy. Oh yeah. Oh shit, okay. Yo, here it comes. I like how they left the zip in there. <laughs> Dude. Okay, good. They got rid of the fire station. I fucking got shot from there so many times. <laughs> Jesus. You know, for being a nuke, that didn't do a whole lot that I thought, but okay. All right. But that's it. Now, as you can see by my reaction, I was kind of just really over the whole idea of the map getting nuked and ready for it to happen. And so... I was just kind of memeing my way through the entire thing. I kind of knew it was already coming, obviously, like most of us did. And so uh, I was just kind of chilling and waiting for it to all go down. One thing that kind of surprised me was for how much build there was to this event, I feel like they could have had it be like a couple different explosions going off and all this different nuclear effects going on. And really, you see a lot more nuclear effect out of the end Nuketown screen when multiplayer games at Nuketown are over than you did out of this whole experience. It just felt like we were strapped to a Predator missile and just basically told to have fun along the ride. But regardless, that was the first event. In my opinion, I don't think a lot of people missed much with this. Obviously, the zombie event was kind of cool. It was a good way to bring back something that we'd seen before while adding the whole Verdansk is getting zombified twist to it. And this is why we have to nuke the map but overall i kind of thought this was underwhelming let me know what you guys think if you thought this was like spot on or if it was kind of underwhelming for you personally if they would have put like a mega zombie or something in this just something to add some spice to it i think it would bump up my score but there was no mega zombie there was nothing different about this this was just there was a cutscene with the nuke in it that we kind of expected to see and there was the zombies mode which we also kind of got to see already during the Halloween event and to matches prior to this big event. Overall, like a four out of 10 on the wow factor. Now, once you were done with the main game mode of Destruction of Verdansk Part 1, you entered into the Resurgence game modes, which featured a new altered Resurgence map. Once you entered these games, you were greeted by a 15 minutes after the destruction of Verdansk screen, just blacked out, and then you dropped into the night mode of the Resurgence map. Now, like you can see here, it's at night. The shader pack is just perfect for rose skins to hide in plain sight and you still will not see them. But they did add a couple new map features to the actual map itself. The main thing that they actually altered on this map was construction. On the actual map, they replaced construction with a new location called Control Center that you can see right here. Now, Control Center was just a multi-level building that had a couple antenna arrays added to it. And I think it was three stories. Yeah, three stories is what I see here um, with a bunch of roof loot and then loot consistently throughout the entire building. Now, if you happen to die in this game mode, you are also greeted by the Resurgence Gulag. Not a lot of people have actually seen this. I, this is my first time actually ever seeing this in my life, which explains why I got bum rushed and had no idea what was going on. But um, this was also active during this event time. Now, second after the control center changes to the map was the nuclear plume that you could see if you look directly west once you entered in the game mode. After all, this game mode did say it was 15 minutes after the destruction of Verdansk, and so there you have it, the massive nuke. One thing that cracked me up was that this massive plume that you see coming from Verdansk basically just dwarfs the whole, like, original explosion scene that we saw in the cutscene after the first main event, destruction of for dance part one i would have liked to see some consistency in the effects for destroying actual verdansk in the cutscene that was supposed to be super hype and like super oh my god like attention grabbing but you don't see that conversion really happening instead all you really really see is a cruise missile hitting a fire station and then you just go to resurgence and you see a big nuclear plume overall with this part of it though i would say the nighttime map was kind of cool it was a cool little twist to have control center be added to this resurgence map and having the whole nuclear plume kind of gave you more depth to the situation that yeah verdansk was actually getting blown up so overall i actually rate this better than the zombies mode i think it was a little bit cooler to play on and i had more fun playing in it than the actual zombies event itself so i'll give this like a five out of ten on the uh, whole wow factor scale and that concludes part one 
of the entire event. Now, moving on to part two, this was a smaller portion of the event, but it's when they actually unloaded all of the weapon nerfs and buffs that you got to see in this new update. And this is likely the update part that you actually got to see as somebody who plays Call of Duty because it happened at 11 p.m. Eastern at night or like 9 o'clock Pacific time. So most people probably were able to access this at the time. So I'm going to briefly skim over this real quickly. But once you updated your game, what you were greeted with was the typical Call of Duty screen until you clicked on Call of Duty Warzone. Once you entered into Warzone, you were greeted with this loading screen for the battle pass, and then finally this rustic entrance screen where your character walks endlessly down a road to kind of give you that nuclear radiation effect that the nuke has gone off and that we're in like that pause time of like the nuke is currently just thrashing the current environment I guess now nothing really changed besides the weapon buffs being implemented in the new loading screen and the fact that the resurgence nighttime mode actually featured letters changing on the drop locations within the map itself as you can see in the gameplay here the only other notable thing besides the map name location changes that you could see when you dropped in with those red letters was the fact that as you got near antennas in this game mode you would actually be hit with some code over a radio signal that some people could use to decipher on a website i don't know the name of the site I, it's a whole easter egg thing that i didn't delve into too deeply um, personally, I was just more interested at seeing the surface level of the game and I wasn't too concerned with everything that was going on in the background. I'm not a huge Easter egg type guy. I just enjoy seeing the new changes that they rolled out. In short, map names go brr, weapon updates came out and radio signals were being put into your brain as you ran through the resurgence mode. Also, the big Verdansk map was under locks this entire time. So all you could play was resurgence. Now, after all that, this brings us to the part three of the new season event. This occurs on the second day of the event after you would have gone through and done the major update. You would have had to do a smaller update to access the game. But once you were done with that smaller update, you would have been greeted by this screen with the orange tint and the destruction of Verdansk part two as the only game mode that you can jump into now one thing I want to note as you enter into this game mode you agree with the screen that says 10 minutes before the destruction of Verdansk so this is actually before the nuke goes off and the nuclear plume has been taken away Another thing I want to note is that when you dropped into this, it was a lot like Plunder, where you actually got to choose your class as you jumped into the actual map. And it's hosted on the Resurgence nighttime map with no critical changes to the actual map layout. The names are actually still red and changed like it's some part of code, but other than that... Nothing really interesting happens until you get further into the game itself. Now, once you go to drop into the map, there's also that eerie quiet that we saw in the first main event in a screen that says, seize the device, destroy Verdansk. Now, this kind of indicates that we're going to have some type of capture mode going on or some type of like hard point, I kind of figured when we were going into it. Now, as you played through this event, you actually saw a little timer saying device incoming, retrieve it with a nuclear symbol, which almost indicates that there was a nuclear football being dropped into the map you also just saw the same cards that we saw in the destruction of verdansk part one game mode that i showed you at the beginning of this video so these cards that are popping up right now on my screen are correlated in real time ideally to the actual zombie game mode that we saw in part one so now what you're seeing is that once this card hits 100 percent there was actually a nuclear football that dropped into this resurgence plunder mode and you were actually able to go and capture that area now i happen to get in on the very last match of this event and so this nuclear football is actually like a capturable device that you have to go and hold and some trolls had figured out that if you go and pick it up and throw it in the lake like you see here you actually can't complete the easter egg so i had to buy Borrow footage from my friend Mr. Ronan live. He's live on Twitch pretty regularly as well. I play with him all the time. I'll link his channel below. So the footage I'm going to show you next is what happens once the football has kind of timed out. So here you can see Ronan looking all cute in the bottom right corner. But if my nuke would have actually worked in my event, then the next thing to pop up would have been a banner saying warning DEFCON nuke inbound. Now what happens next, I'm just going to let you sit back and enjoy Ronan's reactions to it, and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> now, one thing that was weird was I actually got the cutscene that you get dropped into 
after my nuke kind of failed. So I just didn't get to see the explosion. That was really kind of it. So I'm going to show you guys my live reaction with the actual cutscene that you would have seen after you finished the whole nuclear football mode. Well, here's the event that was going to show us, I think. What is this? This must be for the Cold War event here, dude. I guess we ordered some snowy mountain skydiving, boys. Oh, shit! He got got! Oh, this girl's a badass! Yo! Oh, yo! Dude, we need that execution. Oh! Oh, fuck! Yo! Yo! Okay, so they grab the key card. Oh shit, they're about to drop something down, dude. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Brian, I'm, I'm gonna play in a second. Okay, we got snowmobiles. This is like this must be like the whole ground war thing from a uh, Cold War. Oh shit! Yo! Bro, I think I missed out. Oh, fuck, that mountain's gone, bro. Yo! That's the new map? Yo! Oh my god! Hold on, bro. Wait, wait, wait. They're playing the BO1. Dude, they're playing the BO1 theme. <laughs> Yo, that's sick! Oh shit, okay, they're backing it up. They're playing the BO1 theme, dude. Okay, so they're going back in time right now. Yup, yeah, yeah, the 80s reskin. It's what we thought it was. 1984. Yo. Oh, yo, I'm kind of disappointed, actually. Not gonna lie. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, the numbers. Now, I realize everything I said there was pretty unintellectual. It was just like, yo, the entire time. But I was like a kid in a candy store, man. I was just enjoying my time and along for the ride. Uh, but after all that sequencing, you are then able to hop into the new reskinned Verdansk map where they offered Resurgence Verdansk. So for normal players, you would have actually been taken fresh out of that cutscene and dropped into Rebirth Verdansk. Um, but for, unfortunately for me, I wasn't dropped into it right away i actually got put in it after i clicked on the game mode in matchmaking so everybody's experience was a little bit different that way but you then got to hop into rebirth river dance and check out the new map for the first time now i'm sure if you're watching this you've seen the actual new map and you've kind of checked it out so i'm gonna go ahead and leave it there um i hope you guys get a chance to play the update let me know what you guys think in the comments below if the update could have been better could have been worse i know i really skimmed through a whole lot of information but i just wanted to show you guys what was going on just to kind of reassure some of you that you weren't honestly missing a whole lot with this update i think the reskinning went really well i've played on the map a couple times the weapons feel really balanced i like the new map changes i don't really care for a lot of the new color schemes they're going for right now it's a lot more pastel and faded out it feels so you guys have to let me know below but thank you all for watching i hope to see you guys in the next live stream make sure you hit that like button and make sure you get back here in one piece to the live stream or the next youtube video by hitting that subscribe button and avoiding every wood chipper you possibly can because those shits will fuck up the process man do not fall into a wood chipper and i will see you guys in the next one man